And so I'm going to show you guys Eve today. So Eve is several different things. The first thing is, is, is basically a chat window. The difference between Eve and something like chat GPT is that Eve is it's focused on legal. And then the other thing about Eve is that it is a sandboxed LLM. So the data that you put into Eve, they do not save the data. It's not used to train the model, does not go anywhere else. That means that they're able to offer a higher level of security than what you get with ChatGPT. So this is a tool that you can actually use in your practice with client data, unlike ChatGPT, where you should not be putting personally identifiable information into ChatGPT. That's kind of an overview of what Eve is. So let's dive into it. First thing is Eve has a, just a chat. It's like any other chat tool that we've been using. So you can just type in a, a legal question that you have. So let's see if we can just explain the rule against perpetuities in Georgia. I'm in a state planning attorney in Georgia. And so I can just ask you questions like this. You can ask it personal injury questions, anything you want to. The other thing you can do with the legal chat is you can pull documents into it. So in the upper right hand corner, you'll see it says upload. And so I could pull a document in and then query that document. So like if we, let's do this. If we wanted to look at a contract, for example. So this is just a sample contract up off the internet. It's a sample employment contract that the SEC had on their website. So I just grabbed something. I don't really know anything about it. And then we can ask questions. So guys ask me, what's a question that you guys want to ask about this contract? What's the three terms that I could negotiate on? What are the what terms? The top three terms that I should negotiate on. So it's gonna, I didn't provide, okay, here it is. So it's telling me I should have provided more context, but whatever. So, so it can read through the document and you can, you can query it about the document. You can also do things like create summaries. So this is one that I did where I pulled in a client estate plan and then asked it to summarize the document and it it comes up with a summary and so now the other thing that and the more interesting thing that you can do with eve is you can create what are called skills and these are going to be similar to like custom gpts where you give it a set of instructions that are the context and it will execute those instructions every time and there are some pre-made ones that Eve has, but then I've also created some of my own. So for example, I've created one that will draft trust amendments. So I can simply upload into this, into this chat window, a, I don't know where that file is. Let's just say, Mike, you have like 10 trust documents of your past 10 clients. You could throw those in there and say, Hey, here's the intake information of this new client. I want you to create something. That's right. So these are what you see here are the instructions. It says the attorney will give you an existing trust document by upload. The attorney will tell you the specifics of what articles and sections need to be amended. If you do not understand something, ask questions for clarification. Your task is create a draft amendment document using the original trust document instructions the attorney has given you. And then it, it tells you what, what, it, what, there's some standard clauses that I want in every one. And then let me see. We just upload the document. I know where it is now. I had to remember where I had stored it. And let's see, it's in the drive. was asking, is this similar to co-counsel? Yes. So I'm uploading a trust document. It's just a sample one that I created for this purpose. So no real names in it or anything. But so I upload that. It takes a minute. It's got to index it. So what it what it's doing is basically chunking and embedding that. And then what I'm going to do is tell it to create a trust amendment that names new successor, Steve, successor, press, wait for it. Okay. So now it's got the trust document uploaded. It's just a PDF. Here are my instructions that are come from the skill and it takes a minute. And while you do that, let's answer some questions. Wendy asks, can we upload Google Docs or only Word? Google Docs, if you just go on file, leave file. So yeah, great question. You upload currently text or Word documents or PDFs. So it doesn't tie into Google Docs. Another thing that I've suggested to them. I think this, somebody asked about it, is similar to CoCounsel. I mean, it, there's similarities. I tried CoCounsel. I didn't like it. I think some other people have commented on school that they weren't that impressed with, with CoCounsel either. John Skiba says he's he signed up for Eve and he loves it too. So here's our, our amendment document. And now 
what I'd need to do is cut and paste this out into a Word document. They don't yet have any way to to connect that directly into a into a document. They are working on a, an integration directly with Word. So you'd be able to access Eve from inside the Word interface and have it draft things. So this is kind of how it works. I had asked on the school if there were any attorneys that wanted to to help me with some suggestion or, or, or a set of facts. Didn't get anything. So naturally, how would I solve that problem? I went to ChatGPT and I said, hey, create a, a set of facts. You're training associate attorneys in a law firm. You need to give them a set of facts to analyze. And then I created a skill in Eve. So it says, you're an associate working for a personal injury law firm in Atlanta, Georgia, named Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Your task is to review potential personal injury matters to determine if the firm should accept the representation or not. You must keep in mind the general principles of tort law as well as Georgia specific tort law. You should keep in mind the statute of limitations as well as we will not accept cases that are beyond the statute of limitations. After you've been given the facts analyzed, you will prepare a memo for the partner detailing why we should or should not accept the case, including your reasoning and citations to any authority. Then you can prepare a letter to the potential client advising them either we are sending them an engagement letter or advising them to not accept representation, that we are not de denying the validity of their claim. And if they wish to pursue the matter, they should consult another attorney. So let me grab the set of facts out here, hypothetical, and we'll upload those. And it's just a tech, actually text file. So let me just, all right. So we just, now I'm not a personal injury attorney, so I don't know if this, if this is similar, but what I did was I just said, hey, there's been an intake call, an attorney consultation, intake form, just make up you know, the facts of a hypothetical case based on that. So we have Jane Doe is a 35 year old accountant. She was involved in a car accident two weeks ago. She was rear ended at a stoplight by a driver who was texting. She's got neck pain and headaches. She states the other driver was insured, but she hasn't contacted their insurance company. She has auto insurance with underinsured motorist coverage. She mentions a pedestrian witnessed the accident and provided contact information. There's a police report, yada, yada, yada. So then we can go in here and say, you have been given scenario please give me what's this referral what's that give me once this referral for this big case all right sounds good man i can make these up all day so then we we tell eve to chew on that for a minute and here's the report that we get back there appears to be clear liability on part of the other driver john smith who rear into jane why is it always with the smiths who rear into jane doe's vehicle while texting john smith are insured by xyz caused the accident Jane suffered injuries. The accident occurred 3-15-23 well, within the statute of limitations. Jane has suffered, un has uninsured motorist coverage, et cetera. Y'all can read that. In summary, this appears to be a good case to accept based on clear liability. Val Valeria, I will give you a code that you can use to get signed up. Recent statute of limitations, documented injuries, and potential insurance coverage. The next step will be send Jane Doe an engagement letter. So please prepare her to Jane. Uh, and then it'll prepare the letter. So this is kind of an example of how uh, you could use this to do case evaluation. Like I said, I'm not a personal injury attorney, so the instructions could probably be refined to get better better output out of the model. But this is a this is a pretty to me this is an extremely useful tool. I mean, that is actually useful in your practice. You could go in, you could put client data in this, so you could take a transcript of the phone call, you could take emails that you gotten a transcript or notes from the meeting and plug that all in and Eve would then use that information to uh, give you a result. So what kinds of questions do folks have? Let me put the, I'll drop the code in the chat. It's a link actually. So I'm going to put this link in here. This schedule, this is to schedule a meeting with Ryan Jensen. He's a really nice fella who works with Eve and if you mention my name, they will give you a 50% discount. The standard fee for this is $500 a month, but you guys will be able to get it for $249 a month. And Ryan will walk you through more detail than, than what I've given you today if you want to uh, to learn more about it. Any other questions? I think, Jason, you got a question. Yeah, what's up? So this is kind of maybe more so for, for Sam, because the, the global idea is this is a great tool for lawyers to work on the cases, but the goal is, especially in the personal injury, I mean, we have a lot of support staff that works on cases. So I, since you're involved in PI firms as well, what's your kind of thought process, how you would implement it across a team? Cause 250 a pop for every team member that touches the case is expensive. And, but there's a certain level where it would come, come useful for other people. You can add other users, Jason. There's a, 
down here at the bottom left, there's a button that says users. And if you go in there, it'll let, allow you to add the users to your team. But they're still charged monthly, the 250, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. As far as I know, there's no additional charge for adding team members at this point. I'm sure they'll come out with a per seat a charge at some point. But right now, I'm not aware of any additional charge for that. Ryan can answer that question. Yeah, I think he told me that was per person because we did a demo with them yesterday. Okay. Well, if he said that, he would know more than me. So that would... Unless I misunderstood him. I'm interested to see how much overlap this is with the GPT. Chat GPT is native. And but hopefully by the end of this call to see if this makes sense or just let's see if we can build it out with GPTs. I mean, the, the difference between this and Chat G is number one, it has a much bigger context window. So it has a 100, 100K token context window, which is not quite double, but a, a significantly more than ChatGPT does. They also have, as part of the model, they have a case law database. So it can actually do legal research, which if you have read anything in the press, there's, there was a lawyer that tried to use ChatGPT for that. It didn't turn out so well for him. I mean, I would still double check everything. So it, this is, I, I use ChatGPT every day, but I use it for more marketing purposes, idea generation, content purposes, things like that. I use this for legal specific applications.